Okay, so you've got Linux installed, you've signed in, and now you're confronted with, did you get Tuffix set up and everything else? Is everything okay? Well, I've got in front of me uh, my Linux laptop. It'll probably look about the same as yours. I've got my cursor down here. Uh, the bar across the left is how you navigate applications that you use commonly. And then there's an application chooser down here. This is uh, your home folder, and you can double click it, open it up, and you can browse the files and folders that you have in your home in your home directory. And if you've just got this running, it'll probably be pretty empty. So don't be surprised if things look slightly different, like the desktop photo or the icons in the bar. We'll go through that in a second so that you can modify it. <clears throat> so one thing I want to show you is how to open up a terminal. You can come down here to the show applications and click on that and then in the box let's assume that you don't see the icon there in the box you can type terminal and there will be one of them now you might have other terminals let's say something like X, xfce terminal or something else terminal or xterm choose the one that just says terminal it has an icon that looks like a, a black rectangle with a, a greater than symbol and an underscore that's going to open up a terminal this is essentially as though you're sitting in front of an old-timey computer and you can type in commands into that old-timey computer and the computer will do your bidding. And the way this works is it's a, it's a call and response. You type in a command, it does something, and it then spits it out. So a lot of times if something works, it might actually not show you anything. Um, <clears throat> because the text is really small, I'm going to make it larger. And the way you could do that, if I remember correctly, is you go to this, uh, nope, it's not there. Uh, it's up here. You go to Preferences, and you can change all this stuff here. Uh, the text and create different profiles for yourself. What I, you can do from the keyboard is if you hold down Control, Shift, and the plus sign, it'll make the text larger. So I've made this pretty big. I'll make it a little mm, too big. That's the right size. And I'm just doing this so that you can clearly see the text. I, you don't need to change the text on your computer if you're happy with it. So let's go through some basic commands. Uh, there is ls. ls lists directories. It shows you the contents of what's there. And if I type pwd, it'll tell you where you are. This is called print working directory. Now, I'll use the term directory, and that means the same thing as a folder. So uh, print working directory, you can also think of show current folder. <clears throat> and this is called a path. This is, oops, let me highlight that. This is called a fully qualified path because it starts with a slash. Slash is the beginning of all file systems. If you're using a Windows computer, you might be used to C colon backslash or B colon backslash or D colon backslash. Macintosh users might be familiar with uh, slash on the new Mac OS systems or thinking of everything being inside of the Macintosh HD or a Macintosh hard drive. This is just a way of expressing where things are located. And um, we want to keep our files organized, so you want to probably create a directory to put your homework in it. Let's imagine I'm taking a computer science course, uh, let's call it CPSC 101. So I'm going to say MKDIR CPSC um, I'll use a dash here. I don't want to use spaces. Spaces is not good with naming files. That's a habit that you might have to break if you're using um, the command lines. You're going to prefer not having spaces there. So I'm going to make up a make-believe course called CPSC 101 and I'm going to use this command called MKDIR. What this does is it makes a directory or makes a folder. Now notice that right now the last time I typed ls there's just 120 and 121 and now when I do this, it, nothing happens. Well, that's a good sign because if nothing happens, that means good things happened. So if I type ls, uh, you're going to see that CPSC 101 now exists. So I've made a directory. I can change into that directory using cd. So I'll type cd CPSC 101. And then I'll type ls. And again, I see nothing, but that's a good thing because there should be nothing in that folder. So again, I use the cd command to change directory. And if I type PWD, it'll show me where I currently am. I'm inside of CPSC 101. 
If I want to go back out to the folder on that I was just in, I can type cd space dot dot. That moves me to the parent directory, the directory that is outside of that one I was just in. So I type pwd. There I am in my home directory. I can, I can cd into cpsc 101. So that is the basics of uh, moving around and showing stuff. Now, what we might want to do is we might want to uh, edit a file. I'm going to try using Atom. Ah, Atom's not installed. Okay, so I fixed that problem where I didn't have Atom installed and I'm picking back right up, picking up again, where I'm inside the CPSC 101 directory and I want to create a file. So I'm going to use Atom. So I type Atom. Now, an alternative would have been for me to go over here to show applications and I could have typed over here A-T-O-M to find Atom and I could have clicked on it and it would have done the same thing. So whether or not um, you do it from the command line or you do it from that application chooser, the outcome is the same. I have Atom running and it's more or less just like any other program you might have used on a Windows computer or a Mac, uh, Mac OS computer. I've got a file menu. I can create a new file and the new file is right here called untitled and um, this is kind of crowded so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close these windows and if you're interested you could read um, the documentation like there's this welcome guide that you can read but there's also some links that your instructor probably posted onto your learning management system that you could follow to learn more about how to use Atom. Um, Let's try writing a very basic Hello World C++ program. So I'll say pound include IO stream. Let's use that favorite namespace of ours. You're probably wondering, why is the text so large? Well, I use this for teaching, and so I oftentimes will set the text to be really large so I can make sure everyone can read what I'm showing on my computer. So, you know, adapt. Uh, whatever you adapt the size of the text to whatever you'd like and you can also change the font too so that looks to be a very simple nice uh program and it's remember it's untitled and notice up here there's that blue dot that means it's not saved so i'm going to go to the file menu save as and here's where i get to pick where to save it now because i ran it from the command line it already knew I was in that directory, but you might have to use this to navigate around to find the right place to save your file. It's a very important skill to develop is to understand where the files and folders are being placed on your computer. It can actually be quite difficult at first because it's kind of weird to like not, not see these things, but you got to develop this skill of like visualizing where the directories and where the files are. And up here at the top, I'm going to give it a good name. This is going to be my hello world.cpp program and I click save. Sorry, I pushed the key or enter to click on the save, but it saved it. Note that up here it's changed. And look at that, it's color coded the text because it knows all about C++ code. If I come back to my terminal, I type ls, I see the file saved there. So previously when I typed ls, nothing was there. Now that I type ls, something's there. So let's try compiling it. So I'm gonna use clang plus plus, hello world. And look at that, the output is a.out. .out. I wrote my first program. Now, that basically covers everything that a 120 or 121 student would need to know, but let's cover a couple other commands that we might want to know about. One is cp. So if I want to copy this file to say a different name, so I'd have two copies of it, I use cp. And I, the way I remember cp how it works is this is the source and this is the destination, or this is the original, and it goes to the copy. So the original one comes first, the copy comes second. Type ls and now here's my copy. Another command is move. Move can move a file into different places on the computer. It can also uh, rename files. I'm going to, remember, I'm in this directory. I might want to move my hello world, dot, hello world underscore old dot cpp into a different directory. So I'm going to select that one. And I'll push dot dot because that's the parent and I'll hit enter and now it's not there anymore. If I go out to that one directory by typing cd space dot dot type ls 
do I see the file? Oh yeah, there it is, right there, because everything's alphabetical order. I don't like that name, so I want to rename it. So I'm going to say MV, give the original file name, and now I'm going to give it a new file name. I'll give it the date. So it's 2020, and it's uh, August, and it is the 31st. And there we have it. We've renamed that file. So MV not only moves files around, but it also can rename. Now, another thing that we might want to do is to be able to uh, look at the contents of a file. So the file's there. Uh, I don't remember what's in it. Let's take a look inside. And that I can use Atom. But if I'm on the terminal, I can just type less and look at the contents of the file and it'll show me on the screen. Now, when it shows it to me on the screen, if I want to, uh, if I want to get out of it, I push Q and I'm back to the terminal. Another command that you might want to learn about is the man command. Man allows you to navigate um, the manual. So everything that I covered so far is in the manual. You can say man ls, and it will show you information about the ls command. You push Q to get out of that. I can type man cp and learn all about the cp command. And if I want to move down in the document, I push the space bar, move down. If I want to go back up, I can push B and move back up. Reading these manual pages can greatly help you understand how these commands work, but there's also that book that's been recommended called the Linux Command Line, which uh, is a very easy read and covers all the basics of these commands. Oh, and let's say you created a file and you don't want it anymore. Let's say this file here is, I no longer want it. Well, the way I get rid of it is using the rm command, and I just give it the name of the file, rm, and the file, and I can delete it. Now, Wait a second, maybe I don't want to type that command. One thing I can do is I can hold down the backspace key and delete all that. But another thing I can do, in case I ever type something I want to get rid of, I can push down the control key and the C key and it will cancel. So control and C will cancel whatever's on the command line. So if I type crazy stuff that doesn't make sense, I'm like, I don't want to erase it all, I can always push control C to cancel it. If I have something that's running, and it seems like it's not stopping, I can always push Control and C to kill it. So remember that. If you're ever panicking, remember you can push Control and C, Control C and that will cancel it. Now, another command that you'll probably learn in your class is how to use git. So I'm gonna go back into that 101 directory and I'm gonna use git to clone a program. This is gonna be uh, another Hello World program. And I'll say git clone and I'll give it the URL And with that URL, um, it'll make a copy of whatever's located on that web page here. And because it's a Git repository, I can use the Git tool, which is this command here at the beginning, I can use that Git tool to synchronize the files in a way that's really useful for developers because you want to keep track of the changes that happen to files. It's, it's kind of like what you do with Dropbox or with Google Drive or with Google Docs but it's geared more towards keeping track of changes and allowing you to develop software in an intentional way and keep track of uh, you know, good things and also make note of bad things. So that way you can always keep your code organized. So I've got the command written there and I type enter and it clones it. And you might say like, well, how did I know that URL? Well, I, I prepared this in advance. I knew I was gonna show you this. So I had that URL ready. You probably will be using URLs throughout your semester and you can ask your instructor for different Git repositories, or you can make your own. And um, always remember, Git is a tool, and GitHub is a commercial service. So when I ran that command, it created the new directory, hello world. So I go inside of hello world using the cd command, and there I have a hello world.c and a make file. Now, you might not know what a make file is, and we just did a hello world program, but I just want to prove to you that I can make, I can compile this program, they create a whole bunch of new files, and this is the binary. That's the executable, the .exe file, even though it doesn't say .exe, it is the executable. It works, and everything's okay. Now I can come over to Atom. I can say file, and say open folder. 
select that folder, click OK. And what it's done is it's loaded up all the different files in that folder so I can start editing it. Let me get rid of this welcome and this telemetry stuff. Telemetry is an interesting word. And I can make a change here. How about I put another string? I don't like but. We'll say and. I can save that, come back over here, type make, builds it again. If I run the program all over again, it's changed. Now with git, I can type git status and it'll show me that the source code has been modified. And you should read the pro Git book. It's zero cost, it's online. It'll explain how to use Git really well. But here I can demonstrate to you that if I wanna push these changes, if I wanna commit these changes, I can type git commit dash A for all changes, commit all changes, and give a note. So now if I type git status, it's no longer modified. Notice that earlier, hello world.c was modified, and now it's not. Some other interesting things that we can do is, you might have noticed that I can type pretty fast. Well, I'm really not typing that fast. All I'm doing is I'm pushing the tab key. So let's say, let me go out one more directory. Let's say I'm interested in typing this one so I can delete it. Well, notice that there's no other words that start with H. So if I type RM and push H, and then with my left pinky, I push the tab key, the shell will fill in the rest. This saves a lot of typing. And I can push enter, and now it's gone. No more file. Another really nifty trick is that you have arrow keys that are typically in the lower right-hand corner of your keyboard. You can use the up arrow to go through all your commands. And if you go back far, if you go past one that you want to use, you can go back down with the minus with the down arrow and go back through those commands. So that gives you an idea of how to use Linux, um, and that will confirm that you've got Tuffix all set up. If you can compile a program, whether you write it yourself or you clone that repository, um, that covers everything. Now, to get out of this, don't forget, you want to shut down your computer. Don't just turn it off. It can damage your installation. And if you're using a virtual machine, remember that if you're going to uh, put your computer to sleep, make sure you shut down that virtual machine. Great, now I'm gonna quit my programs and I'm all done. I can like shut down my computer and go do something else.